Well, Craig, uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for taking some time today. Uh, when you see that ugly mug of Jay Rose, Hill, what goes through your head? <laughs> well, I enjoyed coaching him back in the day in Philly. You know, it's nice to have a guy like that on your team that can go out there and do what he does and be physical and take care of things. Uh, you know, similar to my my play when I played, you know. Um, so it's always nice to have a guy like that, good team guy and a guy that uh, makes f people feel good out there and a guy that can go out there and, and change the game with his physicality and things like that. Chief, uh, the amount of seasons you played as a player, you're starting to get to that point as, as a coach now. Is that is that odd? And what are some of the differences of, you know, all your experience as a player and now how much you've garnered as a coach? Yeah, well, as a player, it's different, right? You kind of, you you know, you go there and you just, you're focused on obviously yourself um, as a player and trying to get better and improve and practice and do those types of things. It's just, you don't have to think about so much um, as a player, except thinking about yourself and obviously the team and what you do for the team and doing your job um, as a player. But as a coach, you know, there's a lot of things you got to take care of on a, on a daily basis um, you know, you're responsible for, you know, 23 guys in your roster and making sure, you know, how guys are doing and uh, feeling and the team, how they're playing and lineup changes. And there's a lot going on and dealing with your general manager and, and the organization. So there's a lot more as a coach, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, I enjoyed both of them. I, I really enjoyed the coaching side of things and, you um, you know, going in every day and making sure things are planned out and what you're doing in practice and, you know, talking to your players. I think communication as a coach is very important with your players and uh, making sure everybody's on board and what's going on. And, you know, players all have issues. Uh, they're human beings and there's all kinds of things that are going on in their lives that you got to try to talk to them about and also you know, making sure they're playing good hockey for you and doing their job. So what have you been up to? Uh, not too much. You know, my family doesn't come with me when I go coach in St. Louis. Well, in St. Louis, when I was in Philly, they're here because I live in Philly. Uh, so the kids and all that, they're they're not with me. So, you know, I'm alone a lot, uh, in, you know, when I was in St. Louis and they come visit and things like that. So now that I'm home, I'm just I'm around the family and doing things with the family and obviously keeping taps on the game and, and uh, what's going on in the league and watching hockey and, and things like that. So that's about it right now. It's been kind of slow for, for me, which, you know, was fine because I get to spend time with the family, which is nice. So Craig, you itching. I mean, obviously we'd, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about, you know, potential coaching changes made throughout the league and, and whether you're the front runner on some people's radar, if something came about, would you, would you jump at the opportunity and specifically what if, uh, have you ever thought about coaching the Toronto Maple Leafs? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, the spot there, eh? <laughs> well, you're always, you know, I want to coach again because you know, that's, I enjoy it and I, and I want to get back in the game and coach again. And, uh, you know, as a coach, you know, time, it, it was time to move on in St. Louis and that's the way it works. You know, you're, you're, you're hired to be fired to say, but uh, I had a great run in St. Louis. And like, like I said, you know, I'm watching games and you, you know, you keep your eye on things and what's going on in the league. Um, you know, a phone call comes, you got to, you know, obviously, you know, talk about it and see where they're at and what their, you know, their focus is and the organization and where they're going. Uh, for me, I want to work with good people and an organization that uh, is going in the right direction. That's for sure. Well, that's exactly where I wanted to go. Like your plan of action, obviously very established, won the couple couple years back. Um, like what kind of factors will be sort of in this in this decision making process for you over the next little while, even maybe even raging into the off season here? Yeah, for sure. I think you want to look at where the team's at and what kind of players they got. And, you know, I guess you know, are they ready to win? Are they in the process of winning? Are they real young? They're, you know, learning to grow and become a team that's maybe going to win a championship at some point to have an opportunity to. Um, but also it's about the, the general manager and having a relationship with him and the organization. And if that's a good fit, you know, I think that's the most important thing is, is going to a place where, 
you know it's going to be a good fit. Um, you got a good relationship with the general manager. You're, you're kind of on the same, you know, wavelength and and what you think you know has to be done to get where you need to get to. You know, I think that's very important. I, you know, just jumping into a job to jump into a job. Um, that's not probably the smartest thing. I think you got to have real good communication there. And um, again, what's what's the outcome here? What we're we trying to do and where are you trying to get to? Be honest. I mean, what type of person are you? Are you already chomping at the bit to get back out there? Are you you like your alone time, your chill time as well? I like you know the chill time, like I said, with the family. But you know, I I like working. And I like uh, being involved in the game. That's my life. It's been my life for a long time as a player. And, and then, I, you know, I was fortunate to go right into coaching right when I was done. So I really hadn't had too much time off at all. Um, but like I said, like, I, I just don't want to jump into something that's just to jump into it. I'm, I'm not sure that'd be the, the smartest move. But again, you know, I'm all ears to see what's available and what's going to what's going to come. Chief, don't know what's going on with this stuff, but we'll just keep going here. Um, you know, I want to talk about that cup run you made in uh, 2019. I don't think people talk enough about how unprecedented that is for you guys to be at, you know, the halfway point. You become the interim coach and you're you're dead last in the NHL to go on and win the Stanley Cup is just like a, a Cinderella miracle story. And whereabouts was it in, in that run where you realized, holy shit, we might have this team that's actually special. When you when you took them on, it wasn't even on the radar, I'm sure. Um, well, we had good players. We had real good, um, I thought, character in that locker room. Um, real good players. Uh, players that uh, played the game the right way. I think that we made a few moves in the summertime that year. O'Reilly, Bozak, Maroon. Um, there might have been a couple other guys too. I can't really remember. But coming into that season, I think that, um, you know, we had the pieces to do some real good things. But the roles have to, had to be more redefined and people had to accept the roles. And, and then it's about just, you know, getting to a certain style of play that was going to be successful and it took a little time but I thought that uh, going into December we were playing some real good hockey uh, but we just weren't winning games like there was just a couple you know whether it was we weren't scoring enough we didn't get a save here and there uh, but we were playing some real good hockey at the time and then Bennington came up in January and uh, won and we kept rolling with them and you know, he, he played some real good hockey for us, really boosted our team confidence wise. And, you know, we really got to our game. Like I, I made changes when I came in and I think the changes took some time um, on how we wanted to play the game. But once we got going there and Bennington it got into the net, we had a real good one, two punch with Jake Allen. Um, you know, we, we got on a roll and, and, you know, we were winning a lot of hockey games and we went on that 11 game win streak. And, you know, you always think about, well, after the first loss, what's going to become of it. And again, we started winning right away again. So I knew we had a good, real good team. And, uh, you know, we got in there in the playoffs. We, I think we were second in our division. Um, and, you know, going into the playoffs, I felt good about our team. You know, we played Winnipeg in the first round with a very good team. Um, tough out. It took six games, um, you know, but we, we beat those guys out of the uh, out. And, uh, you know, again, all the series were hard. I think, you know, that's the hockey, though. That's the playoffs. It's not going to be easy. But again, we had that type of team that just grinded it out every night. You know, we we're a hard, hard style of play, physical. You know, we, we wore teams down, I thought, and that's the way we won the cup. Chief, uh, I mean, not to date you too much, but the ongoing conversation me and Rosie have on a daily basis, as you know, covering the Toronto Maple Leafs, is like how to motivate players. For some reason, it just it's obviously a bit of a different era, as you know, uh, very close to the game and not far removed, of course, with your time in St. Louis. What could you say to that? I mean, just motivating players, how different it is even from now to even like 10 years ago. 
Yeah, that's a tough, that's a good question. I think, you know, you want to have people that are motivated to play it on a yeah. nightly basis and do the right things. And I think it's, you know, when I took over the blues, like my philosophy was team first. And um, I, I don't think that changes too much. If you want to win a Stanley cup, it has to be a team first mindset. And that's the most important thing. What's best for the team on a nightly basis. And as a coach, you have to do the right things and uh, control, you know, ice time and things like that. To what's best for the team that night, you know, players in and out of the lineup. And there's a lot of different, you know, ways you can motivate players. And I think that's one way is like, listen, this is the way things are going to be going to, this is the way we're going to play the game. And this is what you got to do for the team. And if they're not doing it, you got to make sure that you're you're talking to them about it and controlling what you can control with the player, like uh, because the team's the most important thing, and obviously wins wins are the most important thing. And sometimes players got to take a little less for the team's success. I really believe that. You bet, Chief. Uh, you played for a couple teams in your tenure as a player. I think people might forget the fact that you played played forty games for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, at a point in time there in the 90s what was that like and and can you can you tell our audience like some of the differences from a guy like you uh, that you noticed playing for that organization compared to others yeah it's an unreal organization it's an unreal place to play hockey Um, so when I got traded there I loved it there I mean I was devastated when I got traded to be honest with you and I we weren't a very good team but to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs and put that uniform on every night and play in front of that, them fans and be in, in that hockey town and that market was a real exciting time for me. I played on a line with Mike Foligno and uh, Krushaniski, and we were a real good line together, and it was great to play with those two veteran guys. I was still a pretty young guy, uh, but to be able to play with those two guys, and we had a real good line and good chemistry together, and Again, I, I, I enjoyed my time there. It was short-lived, but uh, like I said, I was I was pretty upset when I got traded. Can you believe it's been, what, like 32 years since the Gilmore trade that you are involved? Like, it's it's crazy yeah. how time flies, eh? Yeah. Well, and it was a good trade for Toronto, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was good for both sides. I'm just going to say that. Um, yeah. I want to get back to something you just said. So, Obviously, I mean, the conversation continues and stems in this market. I'm sure you're well aware, even, you know, knowing going back to your time in St. Louis. What's your read on the Maple Leafs in general? I mean, uh, having, you know, gone through it the last couple of years and, and gone to that pinnacle and won that Stanley Cup, uh, how do you view the Toronto Maple Leafs? Well, they've got a ton of uh, good talent, that's for sure, with Matthews, Marner, and Nylander up front and Riley on the back end. I mean, those guys that are great players for sure. Um, you know, I mean, I think it's just about like they got through the first round last year and they ended up getting beat, but uh, they made good strides, you know, and, and getting past that first round. That's for sure. And like, again, it's hard for me to comment on Toronto Maple Police. I'm not in that locker room. I'm, you know, I'm only watching from afar, but a lot of good players there, a lot of good talent. Um, you know, you know, they have a lot of good upside. I mean, who knows? I mean, when you get in the playoffs, you, you know, you got to, it's about getting on a good roll and, and, you know, it's a grind. It's a grind. It's a, it's a, it's a grind that you got to, you know, you got to move on from losses and you got to move on from wins and you got to get focused for the next game. And it's a battle. It's a, it's a two month grind or more. And it's, it's hard. But, you know, the Leafs got some great players, that's for sure. they got a very good team. Um, um, like I said, it's it's really hard for me to, to comment too much on it with me not there. So I just wanted to add, too, like, so, I mean, just put yourself in, in, in Sheldon Keefe's shoes. You see a guy like Willie Nylander. Like, is he that type of player, that type of talent, where it's like, do you even have to say anything to your GM and be like, like, we have to lock this guy up? Because that's the conversation in this market it sounds like the two sides are making ground on an extension or as a coach, you just sort of stay out of that conversation. Well, I think it's you, you focus on what you have to do as a coach and that's coaching the team and make sure you're, you're, you're um, doing your job there. And if the general manager, he wants to talk to you about that, then you're, you're obviously in them conversations. 
but you know the general manager that you know that's their job is to um you know take care of the contracts and try to sign people i think uh, you know the coach you do your job coaching the players you have there um but there's obviously conversations between a general manager and a coach um at times about players and do you think it's you know where are we at with this guy do we want to sign him do you think or you know so but you got that's a general manager job you bet well chief we take uh, appreciate you taking the time to spend a little bit with us enjoy the time with the family back home and uh, i think i speak for more than a few in leafs nation that say if there's ever a change that happens in this organization we hope you're available <laughs> i appreciate it guys uh you know it'd be a an honor to, to obviously uh, coach there for the Toronto Maple Leafs if that ever happened. Uh, like I said, it's uh, if not the best, you know, hockey, you know, market in the world, and uh, you know, a great organization that uh, you know does everything they can to try to win. You bet. Well, thanks again for the time. It was good to catch up with you, Chief, and good luck with everything throughout the uh, the rest of this season. You got it, guys. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, you got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah.